All right, so in the next couple of lectures, I want to talk about kind of putting what we've learned together. Um, and you know, so far we've used this stuff to look at just really short passages, kind of artificial, right? You know, real arguments aren't going to be these tiny little passages, but you know, I've just wanted to practice these concepts. But I want to turn it now to a longer real argument someone's making, or actually a couple. And you know, A, see how to apply what we've learned to longer arguments, and also I hope in doing so to see why this is helpful. Um, so let's start with what I'm sure you guys will find, whether you agree with it or not, the more boring of the two, the Atlantic article, right? You know, I say it's the more boring of the two because it's just this guy's arguing for this, well, we'll talk about the conclusion in a second. He's talking about phones. He's pro-phone. You know, I'm going to guess you have less strong opinions about that than you do masking, whichever side of masking you might be on. I could be wrong, you could just be fanatical about phones one way or the other. I doubt that, right? Anyway, I used this, you know, a couple years ago, um, the first time I taught logic. Um, I like the article for reasons we'll get into, you know, I think it is just a good thing to kind of start with when we're going to do, ex you know, analyzing an extended argument. So the first thing we need to do with, you know, tackling an extended argument is, you know, what we'll call, what philosophers call distilling an argument. I think I've used this term before, but it's basically just putting it in this numbered premises and conclusion form, conclusion at the end, premises in a sort of logical or sensible order. All right, so the first thing you want to do when doing this, but really the first thing you want to do when, you know, doing anything to analyze an argument and its structure is to find the conclusion and kind of work backwards. So what's the conclusion of this argument? Um, you know, there's some really big grand things he says about phones. Telephones are the best technology. It's right there in the title. He says it a couple times. Um, Phones are efficient, irreplaceable, and essential to civic life. He says that at another point. You know, but we also might say, well, does he explicitly state the conclusion, right? I mean, think about that. You know, these two that are taken from the article, you know, one, telephones are the best technology. We might be a little skeptical whether that's the conclusion because, A, it's vague. What does that even mean, phones are the best technology? B, it, it, it can't possibly be true, right? If we mean telephones are the best technology for everything, well, obviously, if you want to take a picture, you can't do that with the telephone he has in mind, the traditional landline. You know, you can't hammer a nail with it. You can't drive it to the supermarket. Obviously, it's not the best technology for everything. It's vague, and in most ways of figuring out what that even means, it would be crazy, right? Phones are efficient, irreplaceable, and essential to, to civic life. Closer, maybe. But, you know, you ask yourself, what is this guy trying to do in this article? What is it he's trying to get us to believe? What, you know, as an audience, what does he want us to accept? He might want us to accept this statement, but that doesn't seem to be what the whole argument's leading to. Democratic Party should have used phones in the Iowa caucus. Well, he certainly thinks that, right? There was this disastrous Iowa caucus. He thinks they should have used phones. I think he believes that, but I think, you know, the, the conclusion of the argument is something more general, right? So look at a couple others. You know, he, neither of these does he explicitly state. You know, I think, you know, the best way to get the conclusion here, it might not be strictly an implied conclusion, but I don't think anything he says kind of puts it out as clearly as maybe we'd like. So telephones are better for many tasks that are newer technologies. We should use telephones instead of apps and other technology. Or we should all use telephones more instead of apps and other technology. Well, you know, I think he probably believes telephones are better, but, you know, he wants us to do something with this information, right? He wants us to use the phone more, rely on apps less, right? And I think, you know, 
So I think, you know, the final one here, we should use telephones more instead of apps and their technology. That's the best as the conclusion of the argument, right? You know, a lot of times, especially with, you know, longer extended arguments, you might see a few different things that could be the conclusion. You might see nothing that quite wraps up the conclusion. But in figuring out the conclusion, one thing that is super helpful is ask yourself, what does this person want us to do? What do they want us to believe? If they want us to do something, you know, they want us to vote for a certain candidate, to buy a certain thing, to change our behavior in a certain way, which he does, he wants us to use phones more, then that will usually help us zero in on the conclusion. So that's my take on the conclusion. We should all use telephones more instead of apps and other technology. All right. So now that we have our conclusion, we should maybe take a first pass through the argument, the written passage, and find statements that support that conclusion. Sometimes we'll see the same statement written more than once different ways. You know, don't double list it, just list it once, right? So my first pass through, I found these four statements to support the claim. Almost everyone of every age knows how to place a phone call. Simple voice calls are accessible to the roughly one in five Americans who do not own a smartphone. Telephone system is also proven. Telephone communication can't be easily hacked. All this is supposed to support our conclusion. Now, I'm not going to ask you to diagram it at this point because this is leaving out a whole lot, but if you were, you'd notice this is going to be converging or independent support, right? None of these rely on each other. These are all independent reasons to use a telephone. But let's take another pass through here. Well, what do we have if we look a little closer? Well, I pick out a few more statements that seem to be saying different things, right? Almost everyone of every age knows how to place a phone call. We already have that. Simple voice calls are accessible. Then we have this claim about the Associated Press. They've used phones to collect election results for many years. That seems important. Seems like that's going to support the conclusion in some way. So we should probably put that in there. Then he has this claim about telephones encourage the habit of talking to strangers. Well, you know, seems like he thinks that's important. We'll have to see how. So we should add that. Finally, and this number six seems to be a big part of it we can often access information more quickly and reliably using telephones rather than apps. So add those in, you know, again, these seem to be important, so now we have a fuller picture of the argument. Go through one more time, see if we can find some, some other things. Well, you know, telephone system is proven. Yeah, I think that means something more like reliable, so let's, you know, maybe reword that a bit. You know, we can get reliable information about business hours via telephone conversations. You know, he mentions that. We can often access more information more quickly. Ten, really important, encouraging the habit of talking to strangers is good for democracy. So we add more things in. We go through, you know find more things that seem like they in some way support this conclusion. Well then let's start adding, seeing if maybe there are implied premises in the argument. Let's start with this statement here. All right, Almost everyone of every age knows how to place a phone call. Does that obviously connect to 11? And is there anything in the argument that obviously would connect it to 11? So far, there isn't, right? So I think we need to add some premises that connect this to 11. 
almost everyone of every age knows how to place a phone call. Well, why is that important? He never quite says this, but, you know, very young and very old people might not know how to use apps and similar technology. So more people know how to use telephones than apps and other technology. Three, you know, if we were drawing a diagram at this point, three obviously does provide some support for this last statement, what's now 13. So by adding two, one and two together add, you know, um, dependent support, two is a missing premise, three is a conclusion that's drawn from one and two that's another missing premise. This now connects us a little better to 13. Alright, well what about four? Simple voice calls are accessible to the roughly one in five Americans who do not own a smartphone. Well, you know, that seems to give us some support here, but, you know, how many people have access to voice calls, right? You know, if the number is way smaller than the number of people who have apps, maybe that doesn't tell us much about the phone. So, I think we can add something else here, maybe make our reasoning a little more explicit. Fewer than one in five Americans does not have access to voice calls. So now, you know, we're getting closer, we're getting more of a connection to the conclusion. So voice calls are more accessible than our technologies that rely on a smartphone. Well, four and five obviously support this new conclusion of this sub-argument. If we were diagramming though, what do one, two, and three do, right? They also probably support six. Six will get us to this conclusion, so we're filling in premises that make more sense of things, right? I know this is really daunting, but the important thing with any big argument, in fact any big thing, is just to take it small step by small step. All right. The Associated Press has used phones to collect election results for many years. Well, look, does that tell us anything? Does that, is there any obvious way to get from that to 15? No, there isn't, right? As it is, you know, it's like, we're left wondering, well, why should we care that the Associated Press has used phones to collect election results for many years? We've been told nothing about why that's important. But we do have this statement eight, so a telephone system is reliable. And if you look in the argument, he seems to use this associated press bit to give some support for eight. And now eight would support our conclusion, right? If phones are reliable, well, that's one reason to use phones, right? So we need to fill in the gap between 7 and 8. Well, what would do that? Something like the Associated Press would not use phones to collect election results if they had not proven reliable. Alright, so moving on to 10. Telephone communication cannot be easily hacked. Now that, in and of itself, does that get us to, to, to 16? Does that provide any support for what is now our conclusion? You know, we have a bunch of stuff here. I think it does. But you might ask yourself, is there a missing premise here? Could this support the conclusion better? And think about what he's saying, right? We should use telephones more, but not just that. We should use them instead of apps and other technology. So, you know, already you can get from 10 to 16 in our conclusion. It provides some support, but there is a bit of a gap here, right? So I think we would do better if we added, you know, 11. Apps and other technology can be easily hacked. This gets us, now we have a sub-argument, 10 and 11 get us 12. It's harder to hack telephone communications than apps and other technology. You know. Already getting 10 to the conclusion wasn't a super big leap, 
but now that we've added these new premises, add a new premise and then like a conclusion to the subargument, 12, there's less of a gap, there's less of a leap from that to 18. So slowly but surely we're filling in his missing premises, plugging the gaps, seeing how we're supposed to get from one place to another. So it's always like this just go very, very slow. Honestly, me going through the um, the presentation like this is a little artificial because I had to go back a few times. I had diagrams, I had premises, and I'd be like, wait, that doesn't quite work, right? Um, you know, honestly, reconstructing an argument, if you guys ever had Legos when you're kids, you have the picture on the box maybe, then you dump out all these Legos and you're like, how do I put them together right? And you always make some mistakes, you always put them together wrong. You're going to do that in reconstructing an argument. You're going to need to come back and work on it, right? Anyway, moving right along. Now, how about 14, the rest of these? These I actually think there's not a lot missing. Information derived from Google and other programs about business hours is often unreliable. We can get reliable information about business hours via telephone conversation. 13 and 14 seem like they support 15. 15, we can often access information more quickly and reliably using telephones than apps. There doesn't seem to be much of a gap between 15 and 18. Our conclusion, 15 that we can get information better and more quickly using phones than apps. Not much gap between that and the claim we should use phones rather than apps, right? Pretty good support there. Doesn't seem to be anything missing between 12 and 14, I mean 13, 14, and 15. They seem to provide support for that. 15 provides good support for 18, so nothing really missing. 16 and 17. Telephones encourage us to develop the habit of talking to strangers. Encouraging the habit of talking to strangers is good for democracy. I think there's a judgment call here. If you guys wanted to, I wouldn't argue with somebody who wanted to plug in a missing premise. Anything that encourages democracy is good. I don't know. I'm not really sure we don't we need to. Maybe I'm just getting lazy this far into the argument. You know. If a missing premise is really obvious to most of us. Maybe we don't need to fill it in. Most of us hopefully think democracy is a good thing. So I'm not going to fill that one in. Alright, do we have everything that plays a role in the reasoning of this passage? I think so. There's one thing that might still be missing. <laughs> you know, the author says, you know, I anticipate people will just say, okay, boomer, right? seems to think that's something of an objection. What in the world is it supposed to mean? Is OK Boomer just name calling, right? I think if we interpret it, it really is an objection, the objection would be something like this. You only prefer telephones because you are old and fear unfamiliar technology. Seems to be the substance of it if it's anything more than just, you know, name calling. All right. So look, this is very long, there's a lot going on here, but I'm not going to make you ever analyze an argument this long on a test. Even the argument I took from the blog is not this involved. All I want you guys to see is how you do this with a long argument, and it's basically just step by step by step, right? Don't try to do it all at once, break it down into smaller pieces, right? Again, you know, think of a puzzle or when you're making, you know, assembling Legos, if you ever did that, you know, you don't just throw everything out of the box and just start trying to put it together. You work on a corner to start with and you put that corner with another corner, right? When you reconstruct or distill an argument, especially a long one, do it piece by piece, bit by bit and then maybe see how the bits fit in with each other. Always with this sort of conclusion in mind, how do things get there or support that? All right.
So now that we have the argument distilled, we're going to do the same sort of thing with diagramming the argument. We're going to go bit by bit, step by step, till we have a diagram of this argument and how it works, how it supports this conclusion.